Hi, and welcome to our 27th test and measurement video. Right now, we'll look at the cursor functionality in the amazing Fluke 190-152 scope meter. As its name implies, this handheld, battery-operated instrument is a combination oscilloscope multimeter. You can easily select modes by pressing the scope or meter button at the left of the front panel. In the oscilloscope mode, it has many of the features of a large bench-type oscilloscope at one-third the cost. The cursor function in the fluke scope meter serves the same purpose as in most of today's high-end instruments, including Tektronics, Keysight, and LaCroix models. What is different are the procedures required to extract information that is gain <coughs> gained by using cursors. To review, Cursors are pairs of parallel lines that bracket a user-determined portion of the waveform. A pair of horizontal lines parallel to the x-axis and crossing the y-axis when the instrument is operating in the time domain delineates variable amounts of signal amplitude, usually measured, measurable in volts or millivolts, shown in the cursor readout at the top of the screen. Similarly, a pair of vertical lines parallel to the y-axis and intersecting the x-axis delineates variable amounts of time, usually measured in milliseconds or microseconds. The amounts of time are also shown in the cursor readout. Of course, to demonstrate use of cursors in the fluke scope meter, we need a signal accessed from outside the instrument and displayed on the screen. This can be accomplished by connecting a probe to terminals on a circuit board that contains an oscillator. But for today, we have connected to the internal arbitrary function generator, or AFG, that is built into this Tektronics MDO3104 bench type oscilloscope. Just run a BNC cable from the AFG output port on the back panel of the Tektronics instrument to the analog channel A input port on the top panel of the flute. Press AFG on the front panel of the Tektronics oscilloscope. Sine wave is the default waveform. It immediately appears in the flute display. We've used the Tektronics multipurpose knob A to select ramp wave for this demonstration. To see how cursors work in the fluke instrument, press the cursor button located along the right side of the front panel. If you do much oscilloscope work, you'll be using this button often. There are two horizontal lines that delineate a user-determined portion of the waveform associated with amplitude. The amount is shown in the cursor readout at the top of the display. We can press waveform settings in the Tektronics instrument. Press the soft key associated with amplitude on the right side of the display and using multipurpose knob A, change the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of the signal synthesized in the AFG. Notice that the ramp wave briefly changes size. When the Fluke's auto-ranging feature kicks in, the waveform as displayed once more adjusts to fit the screen. In the cursor readout, the new value is shown. The great value of the cursor mode is that the metrics shown in the cursor readout are far more accurate than you could expect by counting divisions and ticks on the screen. To explore more of the cursor features, First, make sure that the cursor menu is on the screen by pressing the cursor button. With the cursor menu in place, the F4 button scrolls through the menu items. We'll highlight the first menu item on the left, labeled cursor. 
Then the F1 button directly below this menu item scrolls through the contents. Going to the second entry, two vertical lines parallel to the y-axis and intersecting the x-axis delineate the amount of time that is elapsing between the two cursors. It is displayed in microseconds in the cursor readout at the top. Returning to the Tektronix bench type oscilloscope, press the soft key associated with frequency. The AFG has been outputting in the kilohertz range, which is why the time, as shown in the Fluke cursor readout, is in the microsecond range. Using multipurpose knob A, we can adjust the frequency. To do this, it is best to toggle off the Find button in order, in order to move faster. Once again, notice that the period, as shown in the Fluke display trace, changes for a second or so until the auto range feature kicks in to size the displayed waveform to fit the screen. The value in the cursor readout remains true to what is coming in. The menu Move item contains symbols for the left and right cursors. Pressing F2 toggles between them. The cursor that is highlighted can be moved using the left or right arrow. As this is done, the amount of time in the cursor readout changes. F4 highlights the third menu item. F3 scrolls throughout it. 1 over t, the reciprocal of time, is highlighted. The frequency in hertz, in this case, kilohertz, is now shown in the cursor readout. This is a very useful feature since frequency would be difficult to estimate by counting divisions and ticks on the screen. The fourth menu item simply toggles cursors on and off. The whole thing is quite simple once you become familiar with the F1 through F4 buttons. Thanks for watching. New videos are added periodically, so check back often.